We all set? Okay, roll it when you're ready. For some time now, we've all been following Katie and Brad's progress on the journey towards having a baby. A long, bumpy journey. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> you've had some twists and turns, I know. But we haven't given up. And we're lucky to be getting help from a friend. Our dear friend, Vienna <laughs> Hyatt, our surrogate mother. Hello, everybody. Well, now, having a surrogate mother is quite common, but I think it's rare to have it happening this way. Do you want to explain how this all came about? Well, I'm sure our audience remembers how devastated I was when I found out that I couldn't have children. Yeah, well, we thought about hiring a surrogate, but that would be someone that we didn't know, and then Vienna just, well, sort of volunteered. Yes, well, I always wanted to experience having a baby, and so this is something I wanted to do for my friends. That generosity does not happen every day. No, I agree. <laughs> uh, so, how did it all work? Well, we're using Vienna's egg, and I donated my... In, my... <laughs> Sperm, it's okay, Brad, you can see Yes, it. <laughs> so, so medically and uh, biologically... Well, and I'm only the mother until the baby is born. That's that's the agreement. I see. And uh, Katie, does it bother you not having that biological connection? Um, it's different, but I love the baby already, and Brad is the father. So as far as I'm concerned, that makes me the mom. And it's, I think it's going to be nice to have a little Brad or Bradlina. <laughs> We're still picking out names. I think Bradlina. Bradlina very... now. Yes. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I just want to say, though, that this is all because of Vienna. We wouldn't be able to take this journey without her. And, Vienna, have you given a lot of thought uh, the day that you're going to have to give that baby away? Uh, have you given a thought how you're going to feel about that? You know, I am I'm totally at peace with this because this is not my child. This is Katie and Brad's baby. Excuse me. I should explain that Vienna's partner is Henry Coleman. He is the author of the new book, the man from Oakdale. So, Vienna, how does Henry feel about this? Oh, he's fine with it. He's on board 100%. Oh. Oh. What are you doing here? I thought you didn't want any part of this. How can I not be when it's my... my partner having the child now in front of the entire viewing public? You know, Henry, we would all love to have you join us. I don't think that's such a good idea. Oh, come on, Henry. Don't be so shy. I need to talk about your book. Okay, uh, as long as you shoot my good side. Up here. Or just shoot me. Come on, sit next to me. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm peachy. The show must go on, right? Hey, so how does it feel to be back in the limelight again? You know, the spotlight, the, you know, the, the cameras. I mean, what was it? The last time you were uh, you know, marrying Katie and I on live TV and a year later. And, uh, yes. Pregnant with my baby. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> okay. You can roll it when you want. Uh, you may have noticed that we have added a friend to our conversation, Mr. Henry Coleman. Henry, thank you. We're delighted you joined us. Thanks for coming. As I mentioned earlier, Henry is the author of the new book, The Man from Oakdale. And any of you who've read his book you know that Vienna is the love of Henry's life. And so, Henry, how do you feel about having your partner be a surrogate mother or your best friends? It's complicated. <laughs> I bet it is. I mean, even though artificial insemination was used, your partner and your best friend made a baby together. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, uh, cut, I cut, can't cut. do this. I, uh... Henry, what's the matter? Sorry, it's, it's my... And I have stage fright, guys. Horrible stage fright. I'm sorry. Just, just, just go on without me. That was strange. Okay, I think I know what that's about. Let me, um... Let me see what I can do. Okay, we need to have a man-to-man -man talk. Oh, I'm not in the mood. I think I know exactly what's bothering you. Really? You're a guy. I'm a guy. Right? Katie's my wife. Vienna's your woman. Brad, let's stop with the birds and the bees. Just get to the point, okay? You know, I got her pregnant. I got Vienna pregnant. Well, at least, you know, I mean, my 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 sperm did. Yeah, that's what you said. And I, I know it may seem all very clinical with the latex gloves and the turkey baster thingies, but it, it's still, you know, on some level, it's got to feel maybe like Vienna's, 
cheating on you. Cheating? Is that what you think? Yes, and I think it's perfectly natural to feel weird about Vienna carrying some other guy's baby, especially when nine months or so that baby's going to come out of her body looking like the spinning image of me. Brad, trust me, that is not the problem. Then what is? Well, obviously something's bothering you that you haven't shared with us. I mean, we're all in this together, so why don't you just... Come on, Henry, put your cards on the table. Excuse me, Brad. Can I have a moment alone with Henry? Yeah, oh yeah, okay, okay. I mean, if you want, if there's anything, at any time you need to get off your chest, I'm, I really, I'm, I'm here for you. Were you about to tell Brad something right now? No, but I should have. Because that's not Brad's in there, that is mine. And I'm supposed, I'm supposed to disappear, just pretend I don't exist? But what does it matter? You don't want it. That's not the point. Then what is? Please, tell me. There's nothing to tell. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Okay, okay, well then, why don't you come back out and be your charming, funny, adorable self, hmm? Okay? Okay, this time it's for real. Henry is ready for his close-up. <laughs> Would you elaborate on how you feel you've prepared yourself emotionally for the day you have to give the baby away? Well, Henry and I, we've decided not to have children, but it's always been a dream of mine to experience what it would be like to feel a, a new life growing inside of me and giving birth and and now I can do that and share it with Katie and and it just seemed like the perfect compromise you're making me cry <laughs> I'm sorry but you know the best part is that I know that this baby is going to have the most wonderful parents and also knowing that Katie and Brad will let us be a part of this baby's life it's it's not going to be the same as as being a mother but it will certainly make me very, very happy. And Henry, I assume you feel the same way. Oh yes, I'm, I'm, I'm happy too, deliriously. Well, you know, this is an amazing story, and I just know that we're all going to look forward to checking in on you during your adventure, and we want you to come back often. Absolutely. We'll be here. Yeah, with <laughs> with bells. <laughs> Can I go now? That was pretty wild. I think the interview went well, but what is up with Henry? I think it's obvious. Not to me. That's because you're not a guy. As you know, Henry's macho pride was hurt because Vienna's carrying another man's baby. You know, he says he's cool with it, but there's this, you know, there's this feeling deep down. What feeling? That he couldn't cut the mustard. Look, I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm just saying that sometimes it doesn't take much for a guy to feel inadequate. No, that doesn't sound like Henry. Why not? I was married to him, remember? He was never inadequate in that department. Too much information. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, listen, if you're right, we know that Vienna won't let him feel inadequate for long, so by the time the baby comes, he'll be back to his old self and probably the most doting godfather the world has ever seen. You're right. You're right. Everything's going to be perfect. Mm-hmm.